Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen, where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. Today I'm answering one of the most asked questions, which is randomly enough, about buttermilk. It's an amazing ingredient for fried chicken, pancakes, cakes, the works. It does wonders, but chances are you don't have it in your fridge, and if you do, I bet it's rotten. <laughs> it goes bad, and you only use a little bit for every recipe, so it's understandable. Anyhow, today I'm going to show you how to make it three different ways. They are all super easy and they all work. So let's get started. In case you didn't know, buttermilk should be made, but is not always made from cream. And then it's like the byproduct of making butter. You churn cream, you make butter, and the leftover is buttermilk. First off, we're going to do a cup of whole milk. Buttermilk has a pH closer to four. Milk is around six. so. It is more acidic. The acid will react with leavening agents when you bake, and it's magic. That's why it makes those fluffy pancakes. That's also why it's used in a lot of cake recipes, including red velvet. Hello, red velvet cake, so fluffy, always has buttermilk. All right, and to that whole milk, we're gonna be adding an acid. Most of the ways I'm gonna show you today basically take milk and add an acid to it. This time, I'm gonna use a tablespoon of lemon juice. Liberal tablespoon. Mix, mix, mix. This just looks like regular milk with lemon juice in it. Well, that's true. So what you have to do is set it aside, but what I like to do is microwave this for 30 to 45 seconds just to warm it up and then leave it around for like 10 minutes. So whenever you're making this, you make this first, do the rest of your recipe. In to the microwave you go. It's got microwave for 45 seconds. I'm setting it aside and we're gonna revisit them and do a taste test later. By the by, let me know in the comments if you ever drink buttermilk straight. Is it just me? Like, am I weird? I don't know. My mom would buy it for me and not ask any questions. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> if you don't have fresh lemon juice, vinegar works totally fine as well. So vinegar is actually the go-to for most people. White vinegar, this is a rice vinegar, basically any vinegar that's not crazy. So no balsamic, please. That's a little bit too far. Method number two, this time we're gonna use cream of tartar, which is a byproduct of winemaking. Did you know that? I learned that at a winery. <laughs> they were talking about all these different kinds of like acids and whatever else that are involved with winemaking and like Chardonnay is this because of this acid. And the only one I remember was cream of tartar because I bake a lot. One and three quarter tablespoons of cream of tartar. <sighs> Listen. <laughs> My 2020 mantra is we do the best we can, except in the first person. I do the best I can. Okay, give it a good shake. I'm just shaking it up until it feels mixed. Getting a little exercise. Now we can set this aside for 10 minutes. Come back to it in 10 minutes. I'm gonna show you what method number one with the vinegar or lemon juice looks like, cause it looks a little crazy and it might scare you. Oh my gosh, what is this? This is disgusting. Actually, it's fine. Oftentimes I'll use this in a recipe as is, but we're gonna give this a good shake too, just to make things nice and even, Steven. Uh, I wish this was a cocktail. That's number one. Number two, and now method number three. One quarter cup of water with three quarters of a cup of sour cream. My son George says water like water. Water. It's very odd. I don't understand where it comes from. So three quarters of a cup. Or if you're not into using cups, go ahead and just do three parts. If you're not into using cups, it's three parts of sour cream. If you're not into using cups, it's three quarters. If you're not into <laughs> if you're not into using cups, it's three parts sour cream, one part water. Sorry, I messed that line up like 50 times. What the heck? Okay. I'm just gonna steal a lid because someone stole all of my lids. Okay, now I have to shake it up. The amount of shaking for this video reminds me of my uh, gin fizz recipe. So delicious. Okay, this one doesn't have to sit. So, we're ready for a taste test. That's right, I'm gonna taste these. First off, the original. Kind of revolting, but I'm so into it, I don't know why. Buttermilk has to be like ice cold to be enjoyable. That's my opinion. So here we have the warm buttermilk. This is gonna be the most difficult to swallow. <laughs> we made this with our acid added to milk. So that was either lemon juice or vinegar. And 
You can see after shaking it up, the consistency is very much like buttermilk. You can taste the acid. It doesn't have the body of the buttermilk, but this works really well in recipes. This is actually my go-to. Number two, <laughs> the cream of tartar. For the cream of tartar, you have to mix it up and then give it a good shake. Now it's time for a taste test. So interesting, I've never eaten cream of tartar before. It's got a brightness to it. These all work, I just thought it'd be fun to taste them. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, the last one is the sour cream. Very thick. Mm. This tastes the closest, oh my gosh. Yeah, they taste almost exactly alike, that's amazing. I'm not gonna drink this, that's a bridge too far. All these substitutes work really well for baking, perfectly fine, I would say, because I've done all of them before. But the one thing I will tell you is that if you're like dipping chicken, for example, in buttermilk, you're gonna wanna use the sour cream because it has the thickest consistency. It'll really like stay on there and be just right. But that's it. The other ones would work in a pinch too, but that would be my favorite. That's the only thing I have to say. If this video piqued your interest, click over here for my how to measure flour video. That is a major for every baker out there that uses cups because so many mistakes have happened because people mismeasure flour, I can't even tell you. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video, measuring flour correctly.